Give the Lord an offer of praise. Amen. You may be seated. As you're seated, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 15. And I want to talk to you, of course, sports is such an incredible, such an incredible um, opportunity as a kid growing up. Both my wife and I played um, played sports till even in high school. She played high school. She got a scholarship to go to Southeastern University to play volleyball and uh, softball. The problem is that she married me and she didn't go to college. But we both love sports. And one of the things that we learned in sports is how to work together. We learned that you need your neighbor. You need your friend. You need the one right next to you because without their participation, without their inclusion in your life, you're not going to bring the ball down the field or score the touchdown, score the point that you need to win. And we all need one another. Can you say amen? amen. Now, there are some people who would argue with that, and that's what I want to talk to you about today, especially a special group that I believe is the greatest collection of people in all of the world. That's the church, the body of Christ, the people of God, who the Word says that were called out from among the world to be a people who were not a people that was special and set apart to be united together to lift up one purpose and one reason, and that is what? The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? That through His name all men might be saved. There's only one name given under, under heaven that men might be saved, but what? In the name of of Jesus. So why? Why is it important? Why is it so important to, to, to get to the house of God, to be connected with God's people, to be here like this and need the right kind of friends? Well, if you think about it, people think that today, and it's just so many, so many avenues of connecting in the world, right? I mean, I'd have never, never thought, and I have friends who have done this. They've met their mate online. There's so many different ways of connecting in the world. And, and even today, people are watching television and they're watching us online and they, they love to see it. And, and listen, I'm not talking bad about any kind of in, internet connection. I, I applaud all that, whatever it means. But let me, let me just tell you something. The people online usually aren't all, not you, but the people online <laughs> usually aren't your best friends. So you ever hear people say, I've got 2,000. My wife's always told me all the time, she says, listen, on my Instagram, I got over 1,000. How many of you guys? So like, 859, all right? I said, you're going to put me down for 150 people? But she's like, like, you know, it's like a challenge. I'm going to see, well, I got more friends than you. And I'm like, you know, my, my disclaimer is, I don't care about all those people. I just want the real friends in my life. And she's like, well, I don't want a lot of friends. So anyway, the point is, is that we have all of this discussion in this, this, this social world that we live in, and we have, a, we have a tendency sometimes, listen to me, to be disconnected from real, true relationships. That's why today that we have, we have really, deter we really designated this day to be friend day, because it's a day where football, let me to give you some statistics. What is, what is the day that Americans eat the most food? Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving you're right, thank you. Can you tell me what the second day is? Super Bowl Sunday. Can you imagine? People eat more and get together. Because listen, you got to get together to eat, right? That's New Orleans style. But people eat more on Super Bowl Sunday than Christmas. They eat more than on July the 4th. And everybody loves eating hot dogs and hamburgers in the backyard and barbecue and all that. But think about it, it's a day collectively where people get together to celebrate one event, whether it's your, whether it's your, whether it's your, it's your team or, or, or not, they get together because it's the finality of a season. And of course, we all wish the black and gold were back in there, but we're still praying, we're still believing, we're not, we're not just fair weather fans, we're, we're, we're believers, and you know, Drew Brees only got a couple of years, and we believe we just get that little window in there, next year's our year. But the point is that today is a great day. But here's the thing, a lot of folks don't understand. How can you mix faith, football, and friends, and why do I need to be a part of a church? Why is church so important to me? Well, let me just read to you 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and I want you to look at verse 15, because Paul says some incredible things here, which kind of gives me an outline. It says, Verse 15 says, if the foot says, because I am not a head, I am not of the body, 
Is it therefore none of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, am I not the body? Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. So the Lord puts together and he calls us the body of Christ. Now I just want to just, just, just talk to you a few minutes. Why do we need each other and we need to come together in a setting like this? I'm always asked, Pastor, I've got Jesus in my heart. I met him. Why do I need to come together? Why do I need a setting like this? Why do I need to get up on a Sunday morning and come to the house of God? Why do I need to invite my friends to the house of God? Why do I need to do all of these outreaches that we do to bring people to the house of God? So I want to describe it in just two quick things, all right? I'm not going to take a whole lot of time because I know you want to get out of here and you want to go eat like we're going to eat. We're going to eat crawfish because people around the country, they're not going to eat like we're going to eat, right? They don't have that stuff. But we've already got it signed up. My, my, my son-in-law has already got the crawfish waiting in the freezer. We got, we're going we're gonna to boil. We're going to really go New Orleans style. We're going to do our own stuff. Come on now. Nobody, if you're in Minnesota, you have no idea what I'm talking about today. But here's the thing. Why do I need to come here? Why do I need, as a, as a fan of God, as, a, as an individual, why do I need to come to this particular house and meet together with God's people? Real quickly, number one, God's presence. God's presence. Now, let me just talk to you about God's presence. I hear you. I already hear you saying, well, I've got Jesus in my heart, and I can sense him all the time, and I've, I've got the Holy Spirit, and we understand that. I'm not saying that God is not everywhere, but there's something about the manifest presence of God. See, there's, 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 there's dimensions of his presence. We carry the Spirit of God. Why? Because we're born again, and we have the Spirit of the living God within us. But it's something about when we come together, when we come together, when we get here into the house of God, when we join with one another and we begin to worship him, we begin to sing praises unto him, guess what? He shows up. He comes into the house and everything begins to change. What sets the people of God? What sets this group above all other groups that you've ever been a part of? What separates the house of God, the church, the people of God from coming together is that when we get into the house of the Lord, the presence of the Lord meets with us and something supernatural takes place in the meeting. Come on. If you understand what I'm saying, give God some praise today. The presence of God distinguishes the church from every other organization in the world. I've been to concerts. I'm telling you. I've been to concerts. I'm sure you have too. Where When the person started singing, I thought I was in church. And, you know, and then they've been you've been at a concert like this where, where they'll say, put your hands up. <laughs> I'm only one? And okay, so talk, so don't act all holy. I know you're in church, but we're going to do something at the end of the service that gets you holy. But right now, you're right like me. So you've been, you're in a concert and, and we're like, come on, get your hands up. And what do you do? So get your hands up. Come on. And what do you do? And it's almost as if, it's almost as if, man, this is it. And I've asked the Lord about that. I've been to some places, and I mean, I mean it's, like, it's, it's like, it's fire. Something is going on in the room. But as I meditated upon it and speaking to the Lord, I said, oh, and they can do all the things that we do. They can act just like us, but the thing that distinguishes you from a concert or any organization is that when we worship him and when we lift our hands, we're not lifting our hands to a song, we're lifting our hands to the creator and the Bible says that he comes among us. Somebody, the presence of the Lord. 
Matthew 18, 20, look at what Jesus says to us. For where two or three, do we have more than two or three here today? It says where two or three are gathered together, what? In my name. That's why the sermon today, the title is Come Together. Why do we need to come together? I'm telling you, we need to come together. Even though you have the Holy Spirit within you, you need the Holy Spirit to come upon you. That manifest anointing, that manifest spirit that comes down upon you and begins to shake and distinguishes you from somebody else. So when you walk out of this room, you're not just like anybody else. You are an empowered person that has been set apart by the Holy Spirit. And it's not by might, it's not by power, it's not by intelligence, but it's by my spirit says the Lord. But Jesus says in Matthew 18, 20, he says, when you do that, I will be what? I will be in your midst. So why do we come together? Why do we take time to come into the house of the Lord and we come here and we sing songs? We're not just singing songs, waiting for people to arrive. We're singing songs because when I lift up his name, something happens not just on the inside of me, but on the outside of me, and I'm transformed from one individual. Let me tell you something. It's not just a one-time event. It's a daily moment. It's a daily event when we worship the Lord, and especially when we come to the house of God like this. And we So there are people who say, well, why do I need this? The reason why we're not going to achieve what we need to get is because sometimes we don't gather together. We don't come together. But when we come together, don't you always come one way, but leave a different way? That's why you need the house. That's why you need the church, the people of God. Look what, look what, what Moses said about the presence. Exodus, let me just read real quickly, Exodus 33, verse 15. He says, then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us from here. For how then will we be known that your people have found grace in your sight? Except what? Except that you go with us. Look what, look what, else, look what else God's commanded about this whole, this whole church thing, this whole a sanctuary, the people of God. We've established that it's the presence of the Lord, right? But listen to what he says here in Exodus 25, verse 8. This is the commandment to Moses. And let them make me a sanctuary. Let them make me a sanctuary. Listen, God doesn't make the sanctuary. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may do what? That I may dwell, what? Among them. Not just within us, but among them. Who's responsible to make the sanctuary? Look at your neighbor and say, say neighbor, neighbor, we are. We're responsible to create the environment, the atmosphere that which a holy God can come to the people of God and deliver them, to empower them, to ignite them, to be a distinguished people. Even though we look like everybody else, what separates us from every other people on the planet. Not that we're better than anybody, not that we're more holy, because we're only holy because he makes us holy. We're different. Why? Because when we come together in the house of the Lord and I lift up my hands, something begins to shift in my life. Somebody said to me, Pastor, one of the biggest encouragement moments in my life was to watch you come to the church when your daughter was in the hospital and she was dying. And I have to confess something. It's not that I, was such a, I have such great strength or courage on the inside. It's not that I have, I believe, greater endurance than anyone else because the truth is, like you, I'm fragile. There are times when I think my faith is strong and things hit me that I really don't know how to handle it. I don't know if you've ever been there. And it doesn't matter how mature you become in the Lord and how more you've walked with God, there are moments in your life where the devil just catches you off guard and you don't really know what to do. But on that Sunday when my daughter was laying in the hospital and Tammy said, why don't you stay here and go to church, you don't realize that I knew that I would be better off and so would my daughter if I got here. You didn't listen to me now. I knew, even though everything within me said, 
the enemy said, no, just hold it on your own. You can make it on your own. You can do it on your own, but you can't do it on your own. And I realized that when I got here that morning and I stood there, even though on the inside, Dr. Tyson, I was a little depressed, I knew that if I got among, not just by myself, because by myself, you can't make it. He only comes really when we're together. And when I got here that morning and I began to worship the Lord and I looked over and saw some other people worship the Lord, I realized for a moment right then, I'm not by myself, that when I come together in the presence of the Lord, He comes to deliver me. He comes to set me free. And He comes to heal and to deliver. Somebody give Him some praise today because He is worthy. Hallelujah. Why else should we come together? Real quick, this is simple. This is simple, but so profound. So many people miss it. Why do you need to come to the house of God? You can't just do it by yourself praying. You can't just do it by yourself when you read your Bible, but you better read your Bible. See, what happens is that we think because we got it all online now. All of our friends are online. We got them compacted right within our little phone. And we think we can have church on our phone. But you can't get there what you get here. There's something about when you walk in the atmosphere and somebody begins to lift up their hands and maybe Overton picks up and starts looking around looking real cute and he starts running across and you go, man, that dude's got something. Because something just shifts on the inside. You realize he's not jumping because his favorite song came on. He's jumping around and running because he knows once what t- one time he was lost. But now he's been found. And when you're in the presence of the Lord, that's the happiest, joyful time of your life. Somebody give him some hilarious praise. Why else? Why else? I've often asked the Lord, why do you do more miracles here than when I'm out there? I pray for people in the hospital. I pray for people on the job. I, I witnessed a, a couple of weeks ago, I was in there to get my ear unstopped and the doctor recognized something. I was in the moment of fast and he said, uh, Pastor, will you pray for me? And I pray for people and I, I sense the anointing of God. Yeah. And I've seen God do great things even out there. However, I have never seen God do out there to the level of what I've seen him do here. And I've often said, why is it so important that I go to church? And here it is. Number one, his presence, and we love his presence. But secondly, it's here where he demonstrates his power. The same verse, Matthew, read it once again. Matthew 18, but look at verse 19. It says, again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am in the midst of them. So the power of God changes us when we come together. We need each other. We need to go stand shoulder to shoulder. We need because it's here that God meets us and demonstrates his authority his power and his glory. Deuteronomy 32 verse 30 says this, how can one chase a thousand and two put 10,000 to flight? When you're out there, it's just one, but in here there's many of like faith. And when you begin to feel and begin to press in together, that's when the Spirit of the Lord shows up and mighty things begin to happen in the house of the Lord. But not just any place. It's about being planted in the house of the Lord. It's about being connected in the house of God. Most people are like 
you know, it, it, they, they view church and view coming together almost like they do restaurants. Now, which one do I want to go today? You know, one of the hardest things that we have, eat, it, our, 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 it's, our, it's our daily lunch decision. We have, we have, what are we going to eat today? I don't know if you like that. If it's like, I, I, I've, I've had that way too much, you know, and I, I don't feel like eating. So, but, but, but it's like, you know, today I feel like eating uh, Italian. And so we wanted to type. So there's some days that we want, uh, I want Mexican food. But some days, uh, I just want a burger. I know it's not healthy. Don't email me. But you know, come on now. That hamburger feels good, so if it's, especially after you've been fasting 21 days. But here's the thing. Church is not like a restaurant. You don't, you, don't, you don't choose which church you want to go to when you just feel like getting a little bit of, I want a little bit of Baptist today. I feel like a little Catholic today. I'm feeling kind of quiet. Uh, let's go over to City Church. I'm feeling rather youthful today. No, 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 no. When we come together, we are planted in the house of the Lord. Let me just show you what, what Psalms 92 verse 13 says. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall do what? Somebody say flourish. How many want to flourish in life? Now listen now, the worst thing you can do with a plant is to take it and uproot it every now and then. It, the worst thing you can do to a plant is to have it in a, in, a, in a pot of soil and then uproot it and move it down the row or move it somewhere else because now it's almost as if that growth cycle has to begin all over again. And that's why most people never flourish because they've never learned the importance of the house of God and planting. Come on, somebody say planting. You got to get planted in the house of God. You got to get in there so where somebody can rub on you a little bit. Because it's all about the people. It's all, listen, listen, don't tell me you love God who you've never seen and you can't love those who you have seen. Listen, I'm going to tell you something real quickly and we're going we're to get into it. Breakthrough is only going to come to you through people. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to. All right. Somebody look at me. Chris, look at me. You, you awake today? All right. Praise the Lord. All right. Look, look, look. Your breakthrough, 95% of the time, will not come through just you and God alone. My breakthroughs have come when I've sat in the church and someone has ministered and the anointing has touched my heart and I move in. God designed it specifically that way because if you got everything between he and God, you would stay away from people. And the very people that sometimes that we stay away from, the house of God, is the place where your breakthrough is waiting on you. Come on, come on. 1 Corinthians 14, 26. How is it then, brethren, whenever you come together? Somebody say, come together. come together. We were singing that song this morning, come together. It's like a Beatles song. Each of you has what, a psalm? Someone has a teaching? Someone has a tongue? Someone has a revelation? Has an interpretation? Let all things be done for what? Your breakthrough is in the house through somebody else. Somebody sings a song, and you come in, you're depressed, and all of a sudden, you feel like you can make it. If you stay away from the gathering, if you stay away from the house, if you stay away from rubbing shoulder to shoulder, you've missed that. And that's why a lot of folks are struggling in their walk with God, and they'll now begin to say, I don't know if it works. The reason why you feel like it doesn't work is because you're straying from the pack. 
Elder, Elder uh, Pam and I were in here last night. We were praying. I remember a few months or a year or so ago, you told me, you said, Bishop, I was watching Animal Kingdom. And I was like, yeah. You, you ever watch Animal Kingdom? Yeah. Something about those attacks and the lions when they just rip another animal apart. just gets all in you. You, you like it, right? It just, it's just vicious. You're like, man, how can it be that way? But she made a point to me. She said, Bishop, I watched this about the attack of a lion. The lion only attacks the animals who are on the edge of the pack. The people, the, the animals are in the, 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 the grouping. They're, they're going this way, and they're going that way. They're the safest ones in all of the kingdom. It's the animals that keep wandering over here thinking they can do it all by themselves. They can make it by themselves. Can I just, can I, can I, can I help you out a little bit? Here's what we need to do. We need to get from here and say, get out of my way, get out of my way. Let me get close to the pastor. Let me get close to the shepherd. Let me get around. Let me get around. Let me get around. I don't want to stay out here. Why? Because if I'm out here, I'm open to the devil's attack. But if I can get in here, I'm safe. I'm sound. That's the way the Lord created us. Why do I need the house of God? Number one, we need his presence. Somebody say presence. Number two, say I need his power. But listen to this, Ecclesiastes 4, 9, look at this, last verse. Two are better than one because they have good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But who, how can the one be warm when he's alone? The one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. Look at this. But a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Now, I have pondered over the threefold cord because the whole dissertation of those previous verses are all about two. You need a companion. You need a companion. But then the last statement that Solomon makes is that a threefold cord is not easily broken. What is he talking about? He's talking about when you come together with somebody else, with the Lord in the middle, that cord cannot be broken. Some people are coming together, but they don't have the third ingredient in the mix. You can do all of the things, the principles that are in the Word, but if it's not under the, the, the Lordship of Jesus Christ, there is not going to be the success and the blessing that all of us desire. Great things take place when the people of God come together. The Bible tells us, though, that we need to come together because there's His presence and there's His power. We need each other. I, I, I just recently, uh, how, how powerful being in the, in the church, Dr. Tyson's been going through, and I, don't, I hope you don't mind me, just, you, you've, had a, you've had a battle. And just a few months ago, she, she, she's one of our elders, and she's been one of the mainstays of this church. She's such a blessing in our school. And, and she went to the doctor. The doctor said, hey, your cancer's, is, is, it's, doesn't look good, but we're going to put you on this. And the doctor was real mean to her and, 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 and all of that. And my wife heard it, heard about it. And she was praying. And she said, you know what? You need to get a second opinion. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you how good it is to have the right kind of people yeah. in your life. Yeah. And she said, you need to contact, I think, MD Anderson. We've never been to MD Anderson. We don't know anything. I think it was just a word of knowledge or whatever. Dr. Dyson calls them, they call her over, make a long story short, one hospital told her, I don't look good. She went there to this hospital, the doctor said, ah, we can take care of this, it's not a problem. She went, they gave her just two pills and she's got to take a pill a day and 
she hasn't even been in our staff meetings in like, like six or eight months. And my wife, Tammy, she went to the BMA, our school uh, staff meeting, that was Dr. Tyson. She was like, my God, yeah. praise the Lord. And she wasn't just, she wasn't just there. She was participating. She had energy. What I'm saying is sometimes you got to have that third person or that other individual that can speak into your life. But can you just give me two more minutes? I lied and said, well, I only had one more verse. I just have one more verse. Y'all pray for me. I'll make Kevin my home. Let me just lift it up one more level. The Bible says that we're not only to gather, but we are to assemble. We are to assemble. Now, let me just explain what assemble is. I, I, I got the Webster's Dictionary. It says to fit together the separate component parts for a common purpose. Okay, where's the revelation in that? We get that. Christmas is one of the best and most difficult times <laughs> of my life as a daddy. We've had four children, and all of them have wanted bicycles at some time in their growing up. The problem is, is that when we go to the store to buy a bicycle, it is unassembled. It's all in the box. All the parts, the wheels, the pedals, the reflectors, some of them get real detailed, they make you put on the stickers and all that too. And it's like, you gotta work 24 hours, and I'm thinking the whole time while I'm doing this together, is this worth it? Right. <laughs> but here's the revelation. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 10, 25, Hebrews 10, 25, not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as we see the day approaching. Now, where's the revelation? All of us can be in the box. You're in the box. So you could come to church and be in the box. Maybe we're going to call a church in the box church. But many times we come together but we're unassembled. You're not in your place on the front row like you ought to be. You're not in the foyer handing out pamphlets, smiling at somebody and believing in a prayer as they walk by you. You're not on the stage, come prepared. You're in the box. You're here, but you're not assembled. One of the things my mom and dad loved was that when I went to, you know, on my first year or two, I had a scholarship. And my scholarship was if I played in the marching band, I could get everything else for free. Now, I didn't want to play the marching band because they wanted me to play drums. And I didn't want to play drums because I wanted to play a melodic instrument, but they wanted me to play drums because they always found out you want to play drums. Then they put you on the drums. And I'm like, I already, I've already, in, my, in my mind, I had mastered that. But then it went even, it digressed even more. They wanted me to put me on the bass drum. And I'm like, really? I mean, it's, that's just like, you know, that, that, that's, that, that's just, that's a put down, man. That's like you, you, you drew Brees and you're sitting on the bench almost, you know. But here's the thing. I remember when I was in the band, the band director was very meticulous about assembling us in the right positions as we marched. And if anybody got out of position, he would come unglued. As a bass player, bass drum player, we were usually in the back. And if you notice the assembling of a marching band, the drums and the percussions are always in the back. Why? Because the, tr the, the sound's gonna travel forward and everybody that's in front of you has to hear the rhythm. If they don't hear the rhythm, they'll get out of step. 
The point I'm, I'm saying is that when we're not assembled in our right place, the people who are not creating the beat, they don't know about the beat yet. They don't know about the marching orders yet. They don't know about what God has given the church. They don't know what you have in your hands. When they come here and they see the house unassembled, they look around and they wonder, what kind of marching band is this? This ain't St. Aug. This ain't the marching 100. This is an unorganized band. Who wants to hear them? I remember as a kid going to Mardi Gras, and everybody, you know, everybody, you know, I say what you want to say. I mean, I guess I am. I'm, I'm, I'm half and half. I, I, don't, I don't know what I am. African American, I don't know, you know, whatever. And I, I gladly accept it. Here, here's, here's, here's my thing. When certain bands were coming down the street, my black side came out. Now you gotta understand where I came up. I came up in the funk years. So the, the bands were playing fire. And the, and the beat was like off the chain. I was killing that beat. Here's what I'm saying. When that band came down the street, they were so organized, so one step that everybody in the crowd, whether they didn't know who it was, but by the sound, the sound, the sound, the sound was so infectious that people who didn't even have rhythm thought they had rhythm. And it's nothing like watching a person who thinks they can dance, but God knows they need to stop. But go ahead and enjoy yourself, because we're enjoying it more watching you. <laughs> what I'm saying is that infectious sound brought people from the streets into the pack to join the sound. Didn't the Lord tell us to make a joyful noise? Where people don't want to come to a church where they're looking down somebody's nose and wondering what's going on with them. Why should I be here? What makes it, why should I be here and not over there? Why? Because when we come together and we're assembled and we begin to make that joyful noise, it's going to be noised abroad and the people that don't know our God yet will join in. And those who never thought they can dance will dance again. Those who were hurt will feel the healing power of the Lord once again. Those who are out there that don't know our master, don't know our savior, will come into the house of God, fall on their knees, and give their heart to Jesus because he is the one who sets the captives free. Somebody. Somebody in this house, give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, sit on your feet with me. So don't just come to the gathering. Make sure that you're assembled. Make sure you're in your place. Make sure you're there because that's the only time that the church really really makes the difference. Come together. Somebody say, come together. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about today, coming together. Yeah. When we come together, His presence. When we come together, His power. When we come together, that's where anointed things. When we come together, we get a word. Like a Tyson, don't go there, go here. Right. Right. It could be a matter of life, a matter of death, a matter of a a, a, a church of people turned around. So I wonder today as we, as we come to the close and the anointing of the Holy Spirit is most definitely here, what is God saying to you about where you belong in the house of the Lord? Maybe you don't have a place in God's house. Maybe you're struggling with, you know, I don't know what church I need to be a part of. I don't know where I need to be. I don't know what, 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 what is God saying? The very fact that you heard this message, it means that God is saying something to you. Because I, I'm, I, I, I called Pastor Johnny last night 
And I said, Mr. Johnny, it's, it's football Sunday, right? He said, yeah. I said, well, I'm calling an audible. For those of you who don't know football terminology, that's when they get up to the play, and the quarterback looks around, and he sees that the play that they've called is not going to work. He changes his mind and calls. That's when they step back and say, Omaha, Omaha, <laughs> Omaha, 17, 17. They're telling the players it's a new play. So I called him last night and I said, Omaha, Omaha. <laughs> we were going to play just the whole clip, but I felt that I needed to say what I had to say today. And what I felt today that there would be some people in both services that weren't sure of where they should come together or not. But today God has spoken to your heart that you need to rub shoulders to shoulders like ball players do. There's nothing like that brotherhood that you really bond because you need your brother. Because if you don't, if you don't have your brother doing his assignment, it could cost them not only the game, but injuries. And that's where it is in the church. When we're not standing shoulder to shoulder with each other, it's not only going to cause us not to win, but it's going to cause us injuries, unnecessary injuries that could be avoided if we stay in our place, remain in our assignment, and do what you're supposed to do, and I do what I do, and then we all win together. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Lord. Praise God. Every head by every eye closed, you say, say, Bishop, today I just want to make sure that I'm in the right place. I'm in the right, right, right. I'm, I'm in the right place in this church. And I, I, I haven't known, I haven't known where I need to be, but today, I know I need to just make a change. Something needs to shift in my life. If that's you, and I know there's, there's, there's a few, just right where you are, I just want you to lift your hand because I want to pray with you. So if that's you, come on, lift your hand with me. I want to pray with you right now. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Many hands have gone up here. Many hands. Just keep your hand up. I want to pray for you right where you are in your seat. Right where you are. I'm not going to ask you to come down. Right where you are, I want to pray with you. But I want you to say this prayer. Maybe everybody can pray it with me. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Come on, say it out loud, everybody. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I believe today that you are the Son of God. That you went to the cross. You died. You rose again for my salvation. Lord, I ask you now to come into my life. Change me, make me, mold me, and set me in the house. Put me in the house, planted where I can flourish, where I can grow, I can mature and be blessed. I give you my life, I give you my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for watching the City Church YouTube channel. If you've enjoyed this message, take a moment and click the subscribe button. That way you won't miss another message. If you've been blessed in any way by this ministry and you want to partner with us in taking the gospel of Jesus Christ around the globe, you can click the link in the description below to give now. Again, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe.